this theorem states that if we have a function which is um, derivable on an interval a to b, specifically it's derivable at a particular point, x0, then automatically it will have to be continuous on, um, at that point. So to prove this, we're going to use the definition of the derivative. So if a function is derivable, it has a derivative, which by definition has to um, exist and be finite. So the definition of derivative is the one with the difference quotient. Which is with the limit as h goes to 0. So the derivative at a point x0 is equal to the limit of x0 plus h minus, sorry, limit of f of x0 plus h minus f of x0 divided by h. And we're also going to be using the de definition of continuity at a point, which says that the limit as you approach a point is equal to the point. So limit as x approaches x0 of the function is equal to the point, which is f of x0. So for the proof, we start off with the definition of derivative, since we know that the derivative has to exist, and by definition it has to be finite as well. And um, we're going to rewrite it in a slightly different way, just because instead of using x0 and x0 plus h, we want to use x and x0, just because that's the, the standard way of, um, of stating continuity. So we're going to say that x is x0 plus h, And um, then the, the difference h in the denominator is the difference between the x's. So that would be x minus x0. So we're just using slightly different notation. So if we start off rewriting the definition of derivative, and here there's supposed to be an h going to 0, we're going to have f of x minus f of x zero divided by the difference in x. So it's just like usual, the usual slope formula, um, just with a limit in the front. So you're taking the difference in the y values over the difference in the x values. Now, since this, uh, this derivative exists, and by definition it must be finite, So if we focus on the numerator, that's the only one that we actually care about since um, for continuity, we only care about proving that the limit of f of x is equal to f of x zero. So those are exactly the two things in the numerator. We can say, first of all, that this is the same as saying the limit of the same thing divided by x minus x zero and then multiplied by x minus x0. So notice how these could just cancel out and leave you with the same thing you had before. So the point of doing this is that now if you have a limit of a product, we can rewrite it as two limits. So limit as h goes to 0 of the first part times the limit of the other part. So since we know that the first part is just the same thing as the definition of derivative, this here is just derivative of x. And the limit of the second part, and I just realized this is supposed to say as x goes to x0 for all of them.
then since the difference in the x's is always getting very close to zero, this whole limit here is going to be zero as well. Because we're just saying the x's are getting very close to each other if x is approaching x zero. Essentially, you can actually replace x with x zero and get x zero minus x zero, which is just zero. So we know that the first part is a derivative, which we know is finite because if a function is derivable, the derivative by definition is finite. So any finite number by, multiplied by zero is just going to give us zero overall. So that's saying that what we started off with, all of this has a limit equal to zero. So technically this is all one limit here. But um, since this part is referring to x becoming close to x0, we can rewrite this as limit as f of x and then minus f of x0 by itself because x0 is not affected by x. And if you just add that to the other side, you end up with limit of f of x as x goes to x0 is equal to f of x0. And that proves that the function is continuous at the point x0. So just to clarify, I meant to write um, x tending to x0 over here. I was using h goes to 0 by accident because that's what we usually use for the difference quotient. So usually h represents the, um, the difference between the x's, but in this case the difference was um, x minus x0, which is tending to 0. And that's the same thing as saying that x tends to x0. The point is that the two points are becoming the same. So in that you're just using the definition of the derivative. We really only care about the numerator. We just have to rewrite it in this form so that the first part just becomes the derivative. And then we can be sure that that part by itself is finite because if theoretically it were infinite, then we would get an indeterminate form. But we do know that it's finite because a derivative always is finite by definition. And so any number multiplied by zero is always just going to give you zero. And then if you plug that back in, we can end up solving uh, for the limit part and so the limit of the function as x approaches the, the point is equal to the point itself. And so that proves that the function is continuous at the point x0.